Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Agito Live video. This time we'll be doing another Agilent account review, this time for Raging Bull. And they are on the Lexington server. They have, let's see how long you've been playing for. Da, 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 September 5th of, of 2023, I assume, is what you meant by that. So they've only been playing, September, November, like three months, roughly. Roughly three months, yeah. Roughly three months. Uh, they're brute forcing everything, betting their way through 12-4. Uh, to 12-4, having trouble clearing world 12. Uh, I think it's gear. Probably is gear. Um, they want help with gearing, fleets, uh, so you can get the world to world 12. And they want to use QE. And yeah. And I have been told that if I see something that irks me, I am free to uh, call it out or roast. So, uh, yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. It depends on how much monarch disrespect there is or how much depot space has been bought. Otherwise, I'm usually pretty chill about these things. So, first we have here level 89 in three months. It's pretty, pretty, pretty standard. Did you buy the level skip? You did after you reached level 39, okay. I have a level 80, okay. Wait, a level what? Uh, for those who don't know, there is a skip to level 75, I think is what it is, uh, pack in uh, the game. It's only been in the game for like two or three years, I think, at this point. Well, something like that. But anyways, we've got just Guam. There is no other, there's no other button here. So just Guam in her skin. Which actually has pretty good animations, honestly. Let's let's be fair. I'm not the hugest fan of it, but it's got pretty good animations. So I did random well, if I logged in and it wasn't set to random, then it's just gonna be one one character in there. So it's not it's random on your instance of the game, but not my instance of the game. So it's just gonna be the one character that you have there. But you know what? That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. All right, so level 89, fleet power, obviously low, collection, obviously low, uh, small titty battalion. Guam is there because I want affinity for her. Well, uh, just as so you know, once you hit 90, you cannot gain any more affinity in this slot uh, without the uh, romantic bonus, the romantic bonus from the event. Uh, characters will only go up to 90. You're going to want to change that at some point. Got your medals up here. Cool. Dailies have not been started, but you said you'd start them yourself, so I'm just going to I'm just going to leave it all there. Just going to leave it all there. All right, let's go ahead and check out the dock and see what you have got what you have acquired in the last 3 months. I'm kind of curious what your oaths are already. So, obviously not a uh, free to play has definitely already swiped or has used all their free to play gems on rings. I assume you are not free to play. I assume you have already swiped. You've definitely swiped. You've definitely, you have a lot of, that's a lot of dock space in three months. You've definitely already swiped. Cool. Awesome. All oaths. Let's see. Who was your first oath? That's my question. Laffy. Okay. okay. Yep. Oh, worst bite, Unicorn, Laffy, Saratoga, Deutschland, Queen Elizabeth, Long Island, Erebus, Helena, Portland, Nuremberg, Valiant, and Crescent. So, this is a oath I've probably never seen. So, kudos to that one. It's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, I've definitely seen a Valiant Oath before. Um, I've seen Erebus Oaths. It's a good choice. Um, I've not seen a Long Island Oath in quite a long time, I feel. So that's, you know, most people forget about Long Island. And I've definitely not seen a Deutschland Oath in a while, I think. I love Deutschland. Deutschland is fantastic. And 
I've seen Nuremberg Oaths. So good, 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 casual, like, waifu oaths. Let's go with that. I don't like Portland, but I oath because I hate retrofit. <laughs> That's a mood. Buru has already stumbled across the ultimate player problem. I hate retrofit in the names of my characters. I am right there with you. <laughs> I can't stand that shit. I want that shit removed constantly. So I I feel that. I feel that in my soul. I really do. I really do. <laughs> already already Georgia Max and Root Max and Cheshire Max. Bam! Someone's gaming. Someone's been gaming. That's a PR ship every month so far. The only problem I see here is that you don't have Monarch. And I am disappointed. I am incredibly disappointed. Just terribly disappointed. Terribly disappointed. QE, Kira, Deutschland, Saratoga, worst part, done by my favorite VA. Makes sense. Makes sense. Smalley. I didn't even know the skin existed. Okay. To be fair, I could have got the packs to get PR done. True, true. Still gaming. Now, what's your gearing look like? I'm kind of curious what your gearing looks like. For HP innovation, yeah, that's good. You're using what you got. I want to switch to this though. Okay, gearing is good. The gearing is good. The gearing is good. Yeah, definitely need to finish uh, Laffy's retrofit, but it takes gold. So, and now you got to save. So it makes sense. All right, I'm gonna go through this real quick, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna look at all these. Um, you should obviously be aware that you're gonna want to level these two ships. I'm gonna favorite. So what I'm about to do is favorite any ships that I think you should work on and level. Um, you obviously feel free to unfavorite them, but uh, you should definitely work on these. Since you said you kind of want to be a little bit of meta, you know, you want to actually progress and do uh, do uh, do more progress. I'm gonna go ahead and just go through and uh, mark any meta ships. I definitely feel you should be working on, or the close the the closest equivalent for your level of account. Basically, I'm not gonna tell you go get Musashi and just level her. That's 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 not gonna help you. <laughs> so that's not gonna help you. And then I'll I'll explain all of them once I get to the end here. Oops. Oh, you definitely need to get a San Diego. Game, I want to meta my way to victory so I can play waifu I want to play. Game first, waifu later. That's the way. That's the way we like to play. Let's go. That's the way we like to play. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I'm down for it. Let's go. Your equivalency, I would actually say a Tosa would not be a bad idea. I'm also going to give you options, basically, as well. Uh, San Martino, um, if you were able to get the gear for her, you were not, never mind. I don't think you were. Oh, you, you, you were, but you gave it to the other character. Eh, let's, let's, let's put her in the Apparently back. Plus Iron Blood I really love. Okay. Let's go back over this. Just real quick. Just make sure there's any I didn't miss. You do have Peter. Scrap wouldn't be bad, and you can get AV. You can get access to AVP. So I will. I will favorite her for now, just to talk about it, because I'm basically creating talking points at the moment. Okay, real quick. Let me just go over them real quick for you, uh, based on what I favorited. So you're already working on Shimakaze. She is one of the best destroyers in the game. So continue to work on her. She's really strong. Helena. Helena is the ship that's like, I need a proc of extra damage. Let's run Helena and just kill everything. Right. 
Enterprise. To this day, Enterprise is one of the strongest carriers in the game. She does double damage. She's invulnerable. The better gear you put on her, the better she does. So very simple. Uh, Georgia is a little bit of an underrated battleship because she doesn't have like a crazy wave clear as a as a as a as a battleship. Uh, her barrage is very focused, so she kind of has to take the flagship position without getting really any bonuses for that. However, her barrage does have a guaranteed crit on it. It's 100% crit chance. Uh, War Sprite has been, despite her retrofit, has been outscaled. However, since you don't really have other options, she is still a really good battleship for you. Unicorn is tied for arguably the best healer in the game and will obviously do great work. You're already leveling her. Obviously, focus on her in Cheshire. You've already maxed out. You definitely want to level Cheshire. She's super good. Amagi, while falling off a little bit uh, compared to other battleships that you can get later in the game or as you play the game more, she's still very effective with stat down, barrages, reload, like all this other stuff. Super strong battleship still. Uh, Eugen is a health tank. She basically has one of the highest effective health in the game. Super good. Uh, but she does very, very little damage even with her uh, even with her new augment. Peter Strausser is kind of a weak carrier, uh, but she does have a time stop, which is a very effective uh, ability in the game. And there aren't a lot. Well, there are quite a few of them, but you have to have access to them. So she is good for uh, she's good for Iron Blood grinding experience when you need to get a backline ship or a, or one of the CAs uh, or CBs. Um, and then there's Rune, who Rune is really good. However, Rune is mild is a little bit outclassed by her uh u version her muse version which you can get out of the core data shop but i wouldn't necessarily consider getting her right away out of the core data shop it's kind of like a mm, right it's she's good but it's like a, mm. um i will go over submarines in a second laffy with her full retrofit is very strong and very good uh saratoga with her full retrofit is very strong and very good as a dive bomber yeah, you don't have much core data anyway, so you're going to want to listen to that. Queen Elizabeth, I know you like her, but she's bad. She's very, very bad. Like, she doesn't have a barrage. Her skill only affects Royal Navy. Uh, her stats are low. She's probably one of the worst battleships in terms of, like, faction leaders. Uh, she's not good. She's not meta. So, but if you love her, then use her, right? It is what it is. Um, Nelson with her retrofit is actually pretty decent, um, pretty decent. So, uh, not a bad battleship when you don't, especially when you don't have other battleship options. In fact, I'm going to start going through this by class instead. It'll make this a lot easier. Um, how is a really strong buffing battleship. She's not the end all be all for her own personal damage, but she gives a lot of buffs to the other battleships in your fleet. Um, Tosa is a really good battleship with strong base stats, a cross fleet barrage, and her own uh, non uh, non flagship required uh, center barrage for clearing waves of mobs and things along those lines and uh, suicide boats. Super good ship. Um, Svatskaya Rosia is basically uh, monarch, but not PR. That's like the best way to describe uh, uh, her. Valiant, same problem as as. Queen Elizabeth, I think she's just like a little bit better than, than Queen Elizabeth, basically. I, I'm, I'm, I'll be honest, I actually don't know much about her. She has a, that's a 50% chance, that's terrible. Um, and she has a barrage that inflicts armor breaks. That's not, that's not bad. It's a separate, it's a different type of armor break. So she's probably slightly better than Queen Elizabeth, but still in the same tier is the best way I can probably describe that. So my recommendations of the... Uh, battleships that you have access to uh, are the ones I favorited here is level up how uh, level up Georgia level up you know Nelson retrofit Amagi war spite Tosa this is any any of these will do any of these that are not the ones I clearly pointed out is kind of bad will serve will uh, will suffice for uh, progression uh, Georgia is going to do you more favors in worlds 11 and beyond in world like 12 and 13. And the reason being is because she is a Eagle Union battleship, which means her, her anti-air is going to be a lot higher than all of the other battleships. It's just, that's just how the Eagles are. All of the Eagle ships, they, they have anti-air. There's just no, 
No if, and, or but about it. They got a ton of anti-air. They're always going to have more anti-air. It's just the way it works. It's why they're so good later on in the world. Because they're big, they're beefy, and they have tons of anti-air. And anti-air stat not only helps you kill planes faster, it also reduces the damage you take. So they're just more survivable in general on the higher levels. Whereas like the Iron Blood ones have really, 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 really low. Yeah, sadly their ability to kill our, uh, suicide boats is a little bit lower, yes. Only eagles allowed in the air. That's right. That's right. That's right, Boober. Only eagles. So. But you don't see a lot. Yeah, you don't. The big thing with suicide boats in um, the end game is that they're actually more, they're bigger. They're not fast and they're slow moving, so it's usually fine. Uh, let's look at CVs that I put on here. So in CVs, I like I said, I already talked about Enterprise. Super good. Unicorn, super good. Peter Strausser, niche because she has a time stop. Saratoga, good because you can run double dive bomber on her for like huge damage against uh, heavy heavy armor targets. I would not bother with Arc Royal and her retrofit. And here's why. And the reason I say this is because she's just too RNG. She does good damage, but her RNG is just why 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 RNG when you could just have more guaranteed damage, right? Like even Enterprise's RNG is more guaranteed than Arc Royal, right? That's kind of the point. Long Island, you probably already know this. She's not um, for the future, when you get to the end, when you get to world 15, you get a third, you get a fourth fleet composition of three fleets that you put carriers into. And I'll show you on the bottom screen right now. Um, you might be able to see it very well, but, um, Arc Royal is a favorite. Well then level her if she's your favorite. That's not, that's not what I'm talking about here, right? Um, you get a CV fleet down here and what you want to run in here is, Two is you want to run carriers that have two fighter slots like these. And most of the carriers that have two fighter slots are HMS ships. So the illustrious class carriers. So illustrious herself. Uh, formidable can run. Once she's once she's fully limit broken, she can run another fighter as well. Uh, and other illustrious class. So you'll want you'll want to level up them like casually in the background. So that by the time you get to world 15, you can slot them in there for extra, you know, the extra bonuses. Um, you have, you already had Kaga and Yumi favorite it. I'm not going to, they're like, whatever. You don't have, uh, they're really outclassed at this point. Graf Zeppelin will be good later on when you have AVP and Praetor Strausser, or you want to use Bismarck or something along those lines, uh, in your Iron Blood fleets, because her, her item and her efficiencies are super high. And I believe she runs two dive bombers. And she can run two dive bombers. So she can put... Graf Zeppelin is another one of those ships that's been slowly buffed over several uh, over several years. That can put out quite a bit of damage. And a 15% damage reduction for your entire Iron Blood fleet. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, CAs. Cheshire. Rune. Guam. Heinrich. They all basically do more, or I should say this, Cheshire and Guam are going to be probably your go-tos later on because Cheshire is an anti-air heavy cruiser with good damage and she just does not give a shit about planes. Cheshire is just like, planes where? Bam, 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 basically. And then Guam is basically going to do the same thing, planes where? Bam, 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 but also you are stats, so good damage as well. Like, to be totally honest with you, I would I would just drop Rune and Oigen and just work on Guam and Cheshire and just go from there. You probably won't need a heavy cruiser for any other thing. If you want to work on Heinrich and you want to work on Rune, you want to work on Oigen, you can still do that. But I would wait to your with until you're grinding Iron Blood experience for like Felix or something along those lines. So otherwise, uh, Guam and Cheshire are gonna gonna carry you through through your uh, your CAs for the time being. Uh, for CLs, um, yeah. For CLs, obviously you already understand how good Helena is. Nuremberg's not bad because she's an anti-air iron blood ship, so she can be useful when you're running um, iron blood comps. San Diego, while a meme, because she's number one, it's not untrue. San Diego... By the time you get to world uh, 12, 13, 14, and 15, is pretty damn good. You get her retrofit all the way through. She makes planes just disappear. And she's she also has good surface damage as well with her barrages. So she's super good. And then... 
Aurora is really good specifically against bosses or enemies where you know you're going to be facing a lot of DDs and CLs, which you will be facing in Worlds uh, 14 a little bit and 15. You'll be facing a lot of those. So she's super, super good. Her evasion rate down. So any any ship that boosts evasion rate or puts evasion rate down, like boosts it up or roots it down, is usually really good because evasion rate is not evasion stat. Evasion stat translate to evasion rate, and evasion rate is just like the flat the flat stat itself. So like if a character had a hundred percent evasion rate, they would never be hit. Basically, more or less is the, is the is the concept behind it. So reducing a a, a character's evasion rate by ten percent is really 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 good. So. Super strong seal. Um, Junyu is uh, good for PvP if you decide to actually do some some PvP stuff. She is like uh, the stable. Uh, DDs. We already talked about Shimakaze. We already talked about Laffy. Laffy too. I'm I I know you've been hearing this since you started playing the game, and since the Laffy this event just happened, right? She is one of the strongest ships in the game now. She is absolutely disgusting. Nigh on immortal. We'll do tons of damage and we'll do everything. You know, you already know you should be leveling her. So, um, Bristol is the same reason that you chose Avora. She brings a, this eventually upgrades to a 10%. Uh, Look at the 10%. Yeah, 10% reduced evasion rate. I think Avora's, Aurora's goes up to like 20, 20% or something like that. So, again, another evasion rate, uh, anti air kind of a uh, destroyer, if I remember correctly. No, no, she's a gunboat destroyer. Yeah, she's a gunboat destroyer of the buffs LM class. Really good. And then for your Iron Blood ships, uh, Z1 in the future, if you really like Iron Blood, you're gonna want to level up your Z1. You're gonna want to get her specific item. You're gonna want to finish her retrofit. She will buff, she will make Felix, your love that you talked about, even better. Okay? You're gonna you're gonna want to level up Z1. She will make Felix better than she already is. Massive, like met, we're talking like huge buffs. Z1 is absolutely crazy when it comes to Iron Blood uh, destroyers. As for SS, like your submarine types, um, Wolfpack is generally the way people go, but because you have the Tempest faction, you could probably run a Tempest, a Tempest submarine, and be perfectly fine. Um. So here's the basically the way submarines work is as long as you have three generally strong submarines, it doesn't really matter. They're just there for a little bit of extra damage, basically. They they provide a, a good chunk of extra damage. That's literally what they're for. So the Tempesta Fleet is just the more fancy fun one, I guess you could say. But you could probably run an Eagle one as well. So And then ARs are kind of pointless. So, yeah. So, there you go. Those are my recommendations for you for as far as, like, what characters to level uh, and how uh, to go about them. Now, as for, like, gearing and stuff along those lines, you're gearing correctly. I will remind that when, when trying to figure out what gear to equip when it comes to damage gear, just make sure you check the armor modification, right? This weapon does less damage to light, more damage to heavy. So you want to bring this this kind of weapon against heavy armor enemies, and you want to bring the other types against light armor enemies. So that's that's it's it's really straightforward once you once you understand. It's just that simple. Just bring that. Um, this so this gun is not great because it's normal, right? 70, 190. I mean, it's what you got. The fire rate on this I think is not great. Yeah, the damage on it is lower. One. Fire rate's about the same. It's got 45, but it's normal. So you're missing out, like, on a ton of damage. Just, just like, look, look, look at this difference. This right here tells you everything you need to know. Yes, this gun gives you a little bit more firepower, but that more firepower does not matter in the context of the mo armor modifiers. Like at all. This is this is terrible. This light armor one is terrible. 70? That's terrible. Even the medium is still 10 less than this one. So and the and the and the heavy is the same. So you you would just be better off using these than these. This is just kind of a waste, basically. 
If it's all you, here's the thing. If it's all you have, use it. But going forward, um, find a map that you can farm these on, right? Open up tech boxes, etc. If it's what you have, you use it. Obviously, when it comes to gear, you use what you have, but you definitely want to transition to better stuff. So, uh, yeah, Klon has a point. Uh, characters, battleships that change this ammo type make this gun a little bit better because it's basically the same, more or less. Um, and that's that's just basically how it how it goes, basically. Yeah, so like Massachusetts, yeah. M Gasco and Muse in Massachusetts are fine because they change the ammo type. So ships that change the ammo type uh, are fine because they have their they have a different separate modifier than this. They just use this part of the stat, basically. They change the ammo type, but they use this part of the gun. So actually that, that would be fine on ships like that. Amagi is not one of those ships though, so you definitely want to change that. Um, when it comes to anti-air guns, basically just use whatever you have until you get the better ones, like the Bofurs and the Twin uh, 113s. That's, that's basically that's all, all it is right there. So it's not totally useless, it seems. The problem is, Brand, Massachusetts, and Gasco and Muse, while those guns are good on them, those ships aren't very good. So it doesn't... So if you put okay, you know, not useless gear on a ship that's already not good anyways, it doesn't really matter. You're, you're not gaining anything from it. You're still using the not good stuff, basically. So. Uh, nope, this is fine. It's fine. Um, in the future, especially if you're doing a lot of autoplay, you're going to want to go toward magnetic torps more. You can see the difference here. Magnetic it means they basically, when you shoot them out, they'll move toward the enemy instead of just going in whatever direction they go, basically. Um, uh, these torpedoes shoot like straight ahead. These ones have a fanning kind of thing. So, yeah, you basically want to start going toward 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 these. You're just more likely to hit. And then the ones that shoot straight out are also fine as well because those are also usually more likely to hit, especially on like manual. If you play a lot of manual. This gun is actually, so this gun is actually your best barrage ship gun. So if you want a ship to fire faster to get their barrage proc off, like if their barrage and one of their skills is based on every time they fire their main gun, you want to use this gun, right? This is the kind of gun you want to use. And if they don't have a barrage, this is usually the gun you want to use. It's like, as like standard entry level gear, these are the two battleship guns that you will generally be using all of the time based on what the ship needs right are the twin 410 and the 406 the triple 406 basically so this is actually good this is actually good on damn it. keeps bugging out uh where'd she go it's actually good on georgia because remember like her is all based on when she fires her gun yeah when she fires her salvo so she has an 80 percent chance at max skill so and her barrage crits so I don't know if anybody knows this, but uh, or remembers this, but Georgia only has two main gun shots. Most battleships have three, and the reason Georgia has two is because if she had three, she would do more damage than uh, some of the UR ships. <laughs> it's kind of funny to me. If she had three shots, she would do. Uh, if she had another shot, she would be doing crazy damage. She already does crazy damage, but she has. She's actually missing one entire one entire salvo. It's kind of funny. Yeah, don't use the gold version of 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 this gun. The gold version of this gun is terrible. Absolutely terrible. Wait, what? No. Yeah. So most battleship shuttle have three bat like three shots. Like they when they when you fire the main gun, it fires three times, right? She only fires twice. Yeah, so don't use the gold version of that. Yeah, I IRS BBs have preload though. That's the difference. She Georgia does not have the the preload shot. That's the that's the big difference there. So yeah, and then where was I? Uh, let's see, CAs. CAs generally want evasion gear, so they want health and evasion because they have very low evasion, so they benefit more from having a little bit of evasion, right? I 
hate Georgia now? Feels bad? No, I don't hate Georgia. She, look, she had to cut her power so that others would feel better, okay? Georgia's just, just looking out for the little guy, okay? She also has more efficiency, yes. Again, if she had a third shot, she would do ridiculous amounts of damage. Not that she doesn't already do a ton of damage, so... Yeah, she's Georgia is fighting with one shot tied behind her back. Exactly. So, uh, when it comes to evasion gear, when you're when you're trying to get up to the higher tier evasion gear, these will basically last you for quite some time. Hydraulics and naval cams. As you can already see, they have the same they have the same stat, so it doesn't really matter which one you build. These repair toolkits, fire supplies, those are generally what you're going to want to equip on your heavier ships because they need the evasion to be a little bit tankier whereas like your destroyers just need health and your light cruisers are kind of like depending on the situation as far as what they need right so yeah i think that's i think that's it for gear and like the ships themselves uh, we'll get to the actual fleet building uh once i get to to that part Yeah, Georgia, if Georgia had 100% proc, it would be a lot better, for sure, for sure. All right, let's look at your depot. Let's start over here. No Valentine yet, because Valentine's hasn't come up yet for this account, obviously. It's a new account, so it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't come up yet. And then we have five Promise Rings ready to go, yep. You grabbed Toshkent, cool. Um, if you were going for meta, probably would have grabbed Kazagumo. If you were going for meta, you probably should have grabbed Kazagumo, but Toshkent's fine as well. Um, Matt, yeah, imagine only having red books, that's crazy. Uh, low cubes, you said you were gonna have low cubes. Uh, make sure you analyze these. Turn these turn these into prototype cores. You will you will get so much more out of turning in the prototype cores than rather than turning them into experience. You should always turn these into prototype cores. Uh, core data. Okay. Uh, real quick. Um, make sure you're buying out your guild shop, and make sure you do it uh, before Friday because it resets every Monday and Friday. So make sure you buy out your guild shop or buy out this part of the guild shop and then refresh. Remember, refresh is only cost 50 tokens. Make sure everybody's refreshing. Uh, and then as for that core, that prototype stuff, focus on getting the 10 right out of here first. Not these. Uh, I did see that you had bought some of these already, it looked like, um, or one of these or other. You definitely want to get the 10 right first. Definitely want to get the ten right first out of here, uh, Buru. So, and then after you get the ten right, you want to get the four fifty seven, and then you can get this, but honestly, you might be better off getting uh, some of the battleship guns and stuff on here. I bought the blueprints for the last minute. Oh, okay, okay, no problem. No problem. Then yeah, I would just say focus on getting these out of here and getting a ten right. Uh, priorities in the shop are white shells, sometimes black shells, independents, cog, cog arrays and cog chips, maybe a rune muse, but that'll come with time, basically. This is like a time thing. So. And then, yeah, back to gear. You obviously got the Guam gun. Nothing crazy leveled here. Nothing crazy here. Nothing good to go here. Da 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 da. Good, 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 good. Just fine. Just fine with the gear you have. Corsairs are fine. Anti-airs are fine. Yep. 
Ja. Yeah, looks good. Just be opening up your uh, tech boxes. Another thing to consider when you're if you if you find yourself farming a lot of gold, um, buying the tech the the gold tech boxes out of here is worth it, especially when you don't have gear. Like if you were just starting out, you know, the first three six months of your account, buying gear gold gold boxes out of here is not a bad idea. So go for it, buy it. Okay. Mostly because it's about to reset, so I'll do it. <laughs> no, do not gamble on cats. That is a waste of your time. You're welcome. And then never buy depot space. You have no you have bought zero depot space. Never buy depot space. Promise me, Buru. Promise me right now, right here, live on stream, in this account review, that you will never buy depot space. Promise me. Never buy depot space. You don't need it. You can figure out other ways to where places to put your gear. Never buy depot space. Good. If the number one, if the number three player on the server can never buy depot space and be top three, if a player can be top three in fleet power and never buy depot space, you can do it too. Awesome. All right, craftables. You already know repair toolkits are good. So are these. Oh. Yo, you can build. Like 20 of these. These should be on every single one of your battleships that you could possibly put them on until you get better. This should be on every single battleship you can possibly put them on until you get better. Period. Period. Like, period. Like, they're just... Every single battleship you can possibly put them on until you get better. Period. And like I said, if the ship has a bar like even if the ship has a barrage, you that that battleship gun will still work. Um. But on battle on battleships that have barrage, you might want to use the four ten, which is the other purple gun, the one you got on Georgia currently. So, but otherwise, you're pretty much just golden to put that gun on every single battleship you run. So. Honestly, it really doesn't matter. It, that, they'll go, the the MK, the uh, the the triple four six is is it's just it's just good, and you can build three Hellcats as well. So yeah, also good, good fighters. The River so. Cafe and above is the the cage. I'm logging the cage. Okay, the FDG gun and the Georgia gun are two separate guns. By the way. So for those for those who don't who maybe don't understand, so uh, yeah, the FTG gun is not the rainbow gun. This is the Georgia gun because this is Georgia's like gun, right? The uh, the FTG gun is. This is the FDG gun. So before people get confused in the chat talking about different guns, make sure you know which gun you're talking about. Um, so that was the dorm. Let's go ahead and look at your research. You are currently researching. Who? Um. So I would stop focusing on PR1. I would move on to PR4 or higher. Uh, no problem, Shuttle. I would move on to PR4 or higher as far as research is concerned. Um, yeah. Because you are... You're currently working on St. Louis, which is fine. Um... You don't have enough for Felix yet, but that's that's okay as far as that. Um, but PR four is the highest power in terms of like research gear. 
Um, because you can use gold to level up all of the characters from PRs 1 through 3. There is no reason to do their research because the gear in them is also just not very, like, it's not the highest efficiency of gear. So, I would change to, uh, if you if you really want Felix, if that's like your go-to, then just go ahead and start research on PR6. I mean, you can still do whatever catch-up you want to do. It doesn't matter what catch-up you want to do for that, in terms of that. Uh, but in terms of your raw research, I would switch to PR6. I would switch to PR6. So I'll swap that for you and then leave that there. Uh, remember, unless you're going to be logging out a lot, don't do um, basic researches. And don't do cube analysis of this rarity. It's a complete waste of time. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of cubes. It's not worth it. If you're going to do cube research, always do just the three cube blue ones. So... If you're going to do cube research, just do the three cube blue ones. If they were the only ones there, find something, like pick something else in the, in the group. Just pick, like pick something else. Like pick anything else other than the cube. If that's, if, if the cube, if like all, not all six of them are going to be the cube one. So pick, just pick something else. Literally anything else. Rigging analysis is always nice because it's gear. Um, but yeah, that's, uh. So, like, in this scenario, rigging analysis because Tenrai, right? Only cost plates. Again, in here. So, like, if you get one like this, look at this. Look at this. This is exactly what you're talking about, I can tell. So, cube analysis, cube analysis, basic research, basic research, and cube analysis, right? In this scenario, if you're saving cubes for a pulls, you probably don't want to do this because that's three, right? And the other ones are also cube analysis, so don't you? So just take the basic research. If you're broke, just take the just take just bite the bullet, take the basic research, move on with your life. Just you just you just bite the bullet, you move on with your life. You, 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 if you got no other choice, you just you take you take the lesser of two evils. Yeah, this doesn't happen very often, but when it does, that's what you do. Basic it is, or refresh and choose something else. I'm not gonna waste his ref I'm not gonna waste I'm not gonna waste the, her refresh right now. So. So it always happens to you, it happens. Not ideal, yeah. All right, let's look at where you actually are. You got Rune here. You're working on this. You should be getting Monarch. Monarch is super good. Monarch, so here's the thing. I'll say it again. I'll say it every time. I'll say it till I'm blue in the face. Till my, till my skin is white. Uh, Monarch is the best PR1 ship. And she will still do work for you all the way to World 14. Okay? Alright, if you need a ship to do some work, work on Monarch. Working on Monarch currently. Looks like you're working on St. Louis currently. I see St. Louis currently. I don't see no Monarch currently. I see St. Louis currently. I'm just saying. Maybe even PR 1 through 3. You said it, not me. Y'all said it, not me. Uh, PR2, you already have Georgia. You're working on our fate sim. It is what it is. PR3, you already have Cheshire. You're almost finished with our fate sim. But here's the thing about Cheshire's fate sim. It doesn't actually matter. It, it's like a very small bonus. So, PR4, eventually you'll probably want to get A-gear and all that other stuff. PR5, honestly, for you, uh, as a person who's trying to play meta, Monarch, Jor uh, Monarch, FDG, Cheshire, A-gear, Hakuryu, Anchorage, AVP, which is why PR4 is so good, uh, Plymouth, Harbin, PR6, Kirsarge, Hindenburg, Felix, Shimanto. So basically your choice between, like, if you really want to play the meta, your choice is between PR4 and PR6 because they have the two, they have the most ships that are going to uh, increase your account's effectiveness. There are at least three ships in each one of them that will increase your account's effectiveness. 
a lot. Let's look at your Operation Siren real quick. Let's see what we got going on here. You are going through the story. You might want to pick up speed on this a little bit. You definitely want to take some time and finna knock out the story of this and get it going. You're slacking. Yeah, yeah. At least you're at least you're honest about it. That's fair. At least you're honest about it. So that's that's I'll take that. Uh, definitely pick up the slack here. As far as fleets are concerned, I mean these are what you got. I'm not gonna concern. I'm not gonna worry about Opsi right now in terms of your fleets because you got a lot of ships you got to level up, right? Um, you got a lot of ships you got to level up, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sweat you on this at the moment. But you definitely need to pick up the pace on this one, right? You want to you want to start getting that gear. You want to start clearing that content. You definitely need to pick up the pace on this one, right? So I'm not I'm not gonna sweat it too much. Uh, yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and. Let's see about making some fleets for, uh... Alright, anyways, um... Uh, mobbage. Okay, let's see here. You're trying to progress World 11, getting into World 12. I need to level these up. You need to level these up. You really, really need to level these up. Like... This would just destroy everything. Um... So would Guam. So would San Diego. Like, if you just had... Fuck it. Um, shit, you could even do this. This would be hilarious, actually. This would be hilarious, fleet. Just do this. There you go. There you go. So I remember to level them. Laffy Extermination. Yeah. Just... Just Laffy Extermination. Dive Bombers are good for clearing. You can use Enterprise here if you want for more clearing, or you can just use QE, um, or you could use Wars Bite, or you could use Georgia, or you could use Nelson. I think Nelson with a retrofit, actually, you know what, honestly, I think Nelson, if you finished a retrofit, would actually be really good for your mobbing. Um, like, what is this again? That's uh, victory Yeah, yeah, this is actually perfect. Yeah, this is, that would actually be, this would probably be a really solid fleet for uh, World 11 and World 12. Yeah, Saratoga and Unicorn third slot is relevant. You're you're absolutely right. And then this this front line, like planes are dead, everything is dead. Laffy doesn't care. Laffy just says goodbye. Like that just this 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 fleet slaps. This will be your this will be your mob slapping fleet. This this fleet will get you all the way through eleven and twelve for sure. I would say. If I'm wrong, then curse me. But uh, yeah. Uh, and then for the boss fleet, uh. For your boss fleet, yeah, that should be enough anti-air. Like, you have two carriers here. You may need to put a third carrier here, so... Like, Illustrious could work. Even Peter could work for time slope. Yeah. Like, literally, the, the last slot doesn't really, doesn't really matter. I only bring Howe because it buffs Georgia, I guess. But you could just bring another carrier as well. You can bring you can bring Ark Royal. Yeah, if you get Monarch, so if you get Monarch, let's pretend. Uh, let's go ahead and pretend that QE here is Monarch, right? You bring Monarch, and you can bring How. But I think yeah, uh, uh, there's there's there you got a lot of flexibility for your boss fleet here. But this is probably what I would do to be honest. This is probably what I would do for your boss fleet. Yeah, Prince of Wales would be good for the eagle, the eagle buff. But yeah, so this should get you through slaughter than bosses. This this fleet, like this fleet right here, if everything like if any of this shit procs, that fleet is dead. Like the boss is just gone, deleted, destroyed, just completely annihilated. There is a hole where the boss used to be. Taiho would be annihilated. Yeah, with her heavy armor, absolutely crushed. Yeah. Yeah, Taiho would just be destroyed. Taiho wouldn't care. And then, like, 
from a mob perspective, like this, I want you, so I want you to understand, Buru, because of like the point where you join the game and the characters that you actually have, these fleets, if leveled correctly and geared even halfway decently, are completely like, like over, overkill for worlds 11 and 12, like completely overkill. So. Never a fan of DDs in the mob, but they're USS, so probably doesn't matter at all. It doesn't. Laffy is super good in the mob, though. Um, especially if you get, uh, if you finish Laffy's retrofit, and you get her, and you get her augment, she gets a heal as well. And it's, you know, probably do, honestly, it'll probably do okay in World 13 as well. You're, you're right. It'll probably be okay, mostly because of the destroyers. Um... But you might need another healer. It, it really, it really depends on the situation. Monarch would probably be a better Monarch would probably be better than Nelson here in that scenario. So overkill, good. Yeah, this was this was actually really easy to build. Yeah, third CV maybe. Can Laffy too use the augment? No. Yes, Laffy has an augment. It's really good. It's really, it's a really good augment. Laffy Loki uh best starter ship. I'm just I'm just saying it right now. Laffy Loki best starter ship. Just saying. So. Uh and then a another option here if you decide to get your your points. Uh if you decide to uh if you decide to spend your uh your core data is uh, independence with her retrofit uh, because then you can put her in the mob uh, with instead of Nelson and they will just slap everything and then um, you could you can just go over here and slap everything it's it's it's, it's a lot of slapping <laughs> really good it's a lot of slapping there's a lot of slapping okay uh, and then as far as like gearing uh, we already talked we already covered this right like you you have a good idea of what you want for your destroyers you want health and whatever their primary stat is. For carriers, you need to pick out the proper armor type. For battleships, you need to pick out the proper armor type. But in your case, just using the MK06s, you MK6s, you will be fine. Like just slap an MK6 on uh, all your battleships and you're you're good to go. I couldn't I didn't I ended up not being able to use QE in your fleets because frankly, if you want to clear fast, QE is not. You don't want QE. If you want you want to clear, you want to overpower it, you want to just have an easy time, you don't want to run QE. You don't want QE. Save that for your waifu days when you're when you're when you're higher level and you have better gear. Um, I would not bother with cats at the stage you are in the game at the moment. Uh, I would spend gold on PR ships, basically on your PR one through three ships that you need. I would not bother. This is actually pretty good. This is pretty good if you get a wolf pack going. This is real good if you get a wolf pack going. Yeah, you can like Kiwi as much as you want. She's bad. Not terrible. Pretty good. Tell me. Yeah. I, I, I literally, so for Operation Siren, you want at least like one cat on whatever your mob fleet is so that you can have the cat dive down to get extra gear and loot for you on the maps that spawn the cat, the cat diving, right? That's the really only reason you really want at least like one cat. And you do want a higher level cat for that specific reason. Yeah. Yeah, that's another way to do it as well. Is just level level whatever you have, and then use them as exp fodder later when you have a better cat. Basically. Yeah, it's it's literally whatever. Use your gold in other places for the time being. They're not they're not bonuses that you need right now. You're not like trying to eke out finishing off. Um, uh, like arbiters or something along those lines. Judge your skin collection. Trash. Yeah, that's my only judgment. Outside of that, the rest of the skins are good skins. Oh yeah, Memphis. Uh, you can get Memphis in here, by the way. Right? Or she blue. Limited. 
Yeah, Memphis is in here. Yeah. I'll make sure you get these first. If meta, get meta stuff first. If waifu, get waifu stuff first. That's just how it works. No problem. Glad I could help. Looks like you are on your way to a good, a good solid start to your account. Uh, I look forward to looking at it again in like six months or so. So now to do the outro. That's going to be it for this account review. If you guys enjoy this type of content, please leave a like and a subscribe, maybe a comment. And if you want to get your account reviewed, please come on over to twitch.tv slash Agito Live where I occasionally do account reviews like this one. So, yeah, that's going to be it for that. And I'll see you guys next time. Later.